Let's start this section by a discussion of variables, which are one of the core concepts in programming. We use variables to store data in computer's memory. Here are a few examples. I'm going to define a variable called students underline count and setting it to a thousand. When we run this program, Python interpreter will allocate some memory and store this number thousand in that memory space. Then it will have this variable reference that memory location. So this variable is just like a label for that memory location. We can use this variable or this label anywhere in our program to get access to that memory location and the data stored there. So now if we print students count and run our program, we will get the number 1000. So this is the basic of variables. Now, what kind of data can we store in computer's memory? Well, we have several different kinds of data. In this section, we're going to look at the built-in primitive types in Python. Primitive types can be numbers, booleans, and strings. Let me show you. So here we have a whole number. We refer to this as an integer in programming. We can also have numbers with a decimal point. Let's take a look. So rating, we set this to 4.99. This is what we call a float or a floating point number. And this terminology is not specific to Python. In the future, when you learn a new programming language, you're going to hear these terms again. Now let's take a look at an example of a Boolean. Is published, we set this to true or false. These are examples of Boolean values in programming. So Boolean values can either be true or false, and these are exactly like yes and no in English. Later in the course, you will learn that we'll use these Boolean values to make decisions in our programs. For example, if the user is an admin user, perhaps we want to give them extra permissions. So these are the Boolean values. Now take into account that Python is a case sensitive language, which means lowercase and uppercase characters have different meanings. So Boolean values should always start with a capital letter, like what you see here. If we type false or false, these are not accepted Boolean values in Python. Only what you see here is a valid Boolean value. So false or true. And finally, let's take a look at an example of a string. So course underline name, we set this to a string like Python programming. So a string, as I told you before, is like text. Whenever you want to work with text in your programs, you need to surround your text with quotes. So these are the basics of variables. So these are the variables from the last lecture. Now I've got a question for you. There are four things that I've consistently used in this program. Can you spot them? If you want, you can pause the video, think about this for a few seconds, and then continue watching. So here are those four things. The first thing is that all my variable names are descriptive and meaningful. So students count represents the number of students for a course, or course name, clearly explains that this variable holds the name of a course. One of the issues that I see a lot amongst beginner programmers is that they use mystical names for their variables. Something like this, CN as in short for course name. When someone else reads this code, they have no idea what CN stands for. Or they use variable names like C1. When I look at that code, I wonder where is C2? And what is the difference between C1 and C2? So these variable names are very mystical. That's a bad practice. Make sure your variable names are always descriptive and meaningful because this makes your code more maintainable. Now, there are times that you can use short variable names like X, Y, Z, if you're dealing with things like coordinates. So that's an exception. Now, the second thing that I have consistently used in this code is that I have used lowercase letters to name my variables. So here we don't have course name all in capital or in title case, all letters are lowercase, right? Let's delete these. The third thing that I've consistently used here is that I have used an underscore to separate multiple words. And I've done this to make my variable names more readable. Because in Python, we cannot have a space in variable names, 
So we cannot have course name. And if you put these two words together, it's a little bit hard to read. That's why we use an underscore. And the fourth thing that I have used consistently here is that I have put a space around this equal sign. Again, that's one of the issues I see a lot amongst beginners. They write code like this. This is a little bit ugly. This is what we call dirty code. Dirty, stinky, smelly. You should write code that is clean and beautiful. So other people can read it like a story, like a newspaper article. It should be formatted properly. And that's why we have PEP8 in Python. Now, the good thing is if you forget these rules, when you save the changes, auto PEP8 kicks in and it automatically reformats your code. But that aside, you should always give yourself the habit of writing clean code without relying too much on the tooling. So these are all the best practices about naming your variables. Next, we're going to look at strings in more detail. Hi guys, thank you for watching this tutorial. My name is Mosh Hamadani and I have tons of tutorials like this for you on my channel. So be sure to subscribe and also please like and share this video. If you want to learn Python properly from scratch with depth, I have a comprehensive Python tutorial for you. The link is below this video, so click the link to get started. Thank you and have a fantastic day.